Greetings, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, had a few requests lately to do a basic knife sharpening tutorial. I've done a couple of these in the past, but I've uh, recently gotten a shipment of knives in, and I got some extras along with the ones in there that I really want. And uh, this is a, a Hinkle Santoku. It's one of their cheaper models manufactured in China. It's still made from ger uh, German steel, and it should be, you know, reasonably serviceable. A Santoku, because of the relatively straight cutting profile on it and the fact that they're wide enough to easily grip and control and not too long, not too big, uh, a Santoku makes a great kitchen knife to start learning to sharpen on. And this one is its not the dullest knife I've ever seen in my life, but it is not exactly sharp either. So I think it'll be a a good one to uh, show you all the basics on. I'm starting with a 400 grit whetstone. <clears throat> I'm going to use, do a basic three stone sharpening today. I've got a, a coarse stone here, a 400, which we'll use to reshape the bubble and put a put a new edge on this thing. And then a thousand grit stone to refine the bubble and make the edge sharp. And then a 4,000 grit to do a nice polish and really get the edge refined and then we'll put it on a leather strop a little bit so the basics first thing is these bevels are at an angle you know we want the edge to be kind of a, a V and generally for Western style knives we want each side of the V to be at about 17 to 18 degrees this is a good starting point but any anywhere from like 15 to 20 degrees is fine <clears throat> so how do we find 17 18 degrees well there's 90 degrees, half of that, about 45 degrees, half of that, about 22 degrees, and just a little lower, and you get your 17, 18. So it's pretty simple. As far as gripping the knife, I wrap my, uh, <clears throat> my middle finger goes under the choil here, kind of under the bottom of the handle, like that. And then my thumb goes down close to the edge to supply pressure. And my index finger goes up on the uh, spine of the knife for control. So we have our grip. <clears throat> we have our approximate angle. And by the way, I mean, having perfect angle control is a wonderful thing, but you can put a very nice edge on a knife and make it perfectly uh, serviceable for your kitchen needs without having perfect angle control. With time and practice, you'll develop better control. The fingers, two or three fingers, I, I use two of the left hand, go just above the cutting edge, and they help to hold the uh, edge of the knife down against the stone and apply pressure. So basically, we just do a, a back and forth motion, and I hold the knife at approximately a kind of a 45 degree angle to the stone, 45 to 50 degrees like this. That seems to be the, the best for stability <clears throat> and also for keeping a lot of the blade on the stone at the same time, which makes it uh, less work, makes it less work to uh, to do the whole length of the blade. So each time we cover the entire blade, that's called a pass. So if we start up in the tip, you can also start in the heel. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter. You can kind of and then walk your pressure fingers down the blade. Wherever you're pushing is where you're sharpening. So a short little blade like this doesn't require too many stops. So, how do you know when you're done? <clears throat> well, you know when you're done when you've raised a burr. So, we're sharpening the underside of the knife when the, the top side of the knife, when we feel a metal wire burr wrap around the edge all the way down, then we're done. And typically, when you're dealing with a... <clears throat> excuse me. When you're dealing with a pretty dull knife like this one, you're going to spend more time on your course of stone just raising a burr and 
And then once you have a burr all the way down, then you flip the knife over and you do the same on the other side. And that can involve either switching hands or not. Today I'm going to switch hands because I have recently changed my technique for sharpening standard double bevel knives like this to where I switch hands. And I did not do that because to make my results better necessarily, I did it to even out the wear on my stones. So what you're going to start finding after a few passes going from heel to tip, or tip to heel, or heel to tip, <clears throat> is that you'll start to feel the burr in some places, but not others. And the places that you don't feel the burr, like right now, it's right in this spot. I'm not, I'm not feeling anything yet. This is the spots that are going to need a little extra love and attention. The way this particular whetstone is what we call a soaking stone. It has to be soaked in water prior to use. And then <clears throat> may occasionally need a little more water applied to the surface as a refresher so that your knife glides on the stone nicely. So this particular knife, I'm getting a mostly have a burr. There's some little micro chipping in the heel right around where my thumb is here. So I'm going to spin, even though I have a burr, I have reached the edge, but I'm going to spend a little extra time in the heel here just to get the tiny little chips out. Ideally we want our new edge to be completely clean, free of chips. A nice burr now. Still need a little more there. So I'm going to, now that I've Put a little extra work into that heel section where the chip was. I'm going to do another complete pass, working the entire length of the blade. You can now hear that burr pretty well. It needs, still needs a little more work right up in the tip. Heel's good. Let's see how our chip is doing. The chip is almost invisible now. I think it will come the rest of the way out when I do the other side of the blade. Okay, this is uh, Western knives, which are stainless steel, tend to be pretty soft. They sharpen up pretty, they take an edge pretty easily. This particular knife is actually thicker in the tip which is why it's taking me a little longer to reach crispy burr nirvana right at the tip of the knife. But got it now, you can hear the sound of my thumb dragging across that burr. If I repeat this on this side, you don't really hear that. You hear the difference? And you can feel it. <clears throat> you can absolutely feel that. So, just check my light source here. Still a little bit of a chip there. So, just a little more. A little more heel. Been sharpening an awful lot of Japanese knives lately, which are typically sharpened at a lower angle than Western knives are. So, I have to be careful not to lay the blade over a too shallow of an angle. Okay, so we're ready to switch sides. Now you have two options. So we were like this, right? Sharpening the right side of the knife. You can either flip the knife and sharpen this away. I'll just demonstrate. Like this. Or you can do what I have recently started doing and switch hands entirely and switch your entire setup so now your left thumb is down by the spine your left index finger or your left thumb is <laughs> sorry down by the edge your left index fingers up by the spine you control the angle and the fingers on your right hand now supply your your pressure this is this is very much my uh, 
my dummy side and is not nearly as adept as my right side. So for those of you at home, what you're seeing me doing right now, this is very much on a par with the sensations you are going to experience trying to do this as a beginner for the first time. And it's actually one of the reasons that I elected to, to switch hands for this video. Okay, on a nice burr. I think because I don't have as much muscle memory developed on that side, I set an angle. It's more it's more easy to hold the angle that I set paradoxically and not let it slip into another angle that I'm used to. Alright, so the burr is reached. There's still some chipping nonsense in the heel. I can feel a little bit bit of nonsense there. So I'm gonna work on the heel a little more. <clears throat> so we get that sorted out. So again, the finger, the finger, the two fingers on my right hand down here, about a quarter inch up above the edge. I'm going to be sure to keep those off the stone and away from the edge. Now you can hear we have flipped the bird. Is oh, need a little more in the right in the tip. Very good, very good. Let's see how this is feeling. I think the chips are out now. Going to deeper both sides. I like to, uh, on the course of stone, <clears throat> I really like to make, once I've raised a burr on both sides, I like to repeat the process. I like to start back over and just do a pass or two on each side. Make sure that I flip the burr all the way down. I have. Now we go back to the other side, repeat the process. You really want you really want to know that your burr is completely switching sides. This side now is where I have to take a little more care. It's setting up to make sure I've got everything aligned properly. <clears throat> the right side. It's all muscle memory. I don't have to think about it. Do it in my sleep. This side, very much like what those of you who have not done much or any freehand sharpening like this will be experiencing when you go to try it yourselves. All right, so I think we're about there. So just a tiny bit of gentle deburring. This is not absolutely necessary at this stage. But when I, the coarse stone lays a pretty big, snarly, nasty burr on the side of the edge. And when I go in on my next stone, I would rather not cut into the stone by having that giant burr there. So here's what we've got so far. There's not really any polish going on, and so you cannot really see uh, the edge very well. So usually, <clears throat> this next stone, I usually just put it right flat down on my towel here, but I'm going to use this brick to give a little elevation so it shows better on the camera. So, set it right on the brick. Very nice, very nice. All about that cinematography. <clears throat> Still learning. This is a uh, Swahiro Dabato. Whoops. Let me get a towel. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't want the stone sliding around on the brick. A moist towel. Personally, I have a towel of about nice size floating around right here. Here we go. Stone will now not slip. So, a red brick. You don't need anything fancy. Get yourself a couple of good, decent wet stones. Uh, this one is a splash and go stone, so it doesn't need to soak. Good. Now we. No slippage. Perfect little, <clears throat> perfect little pedestal here. So now we just repeat the procedure. We set our angle, 
start at the heel, start at the tip, it doesn't matter. I've been starting at the tip lately. And off we go on the thousand grip. You, <clears throat> since we made a good we made a good bevel with the coarse stone, if you don't pretty quickly start feeling a burr, you hear that? So that was one pass and the burr completely formed after one pass. This is pretty soft steel, so it's easy to pretty easy to get the burr. I usually Go ahead and do, I still feel there's a little roughness at the heel, but if you're not feeling a burr pretty quickly once you get onto your intermediate stone, it probably means you're holding your angle a little too low, so you're, you're sharpening up above the edge, but not right at the edge. So we want to sharpen, obviously, right at the edge. And I think... Uh, Still a little nonsense going on in that heel. There's a little more microchippiness there than I thought. So I'm gonna just want that nice and smoothed out. And if somebody was like using this knife to chop through some coconuts or something, I don't know. A great burr. Alright, that's feeling a lot smoother now. Now, other side. So we get off this stone, the rest of it's kind of go very quickly. We're just polishing. And we'll do a little cut testing. All of the day. But again, just uh, setting your angle, letting the fingers of your other hand apply a little pressure down on the blade. It's not a lot of pressure. I would say it's just firm. You just want a nice firm glide back and forth across the stone. You don't need to push down hard. All right, this around the heel starting, finally starting to feel a little cleaner. It's a good thing. I'll go ahead and do another pass or two on this side. I tend to not take the steel off on this side quite as fast just because I'm not as practice, not as efficient. Get a reasonable angle here. <clears throat> Typically I I do the right side. It's so uh, automatic. The left side I have to really think about what I'm doing. This is the fifth or sixth knife now I've sharpened switching hands, so I'm getting a little better at it. Okay, we have burr all the way down. It's starting to feel better. It's still a little nonsense at the heel. <clears throat> if I weren't on camera, I would probably go back to the core stone and do a little more work in the heel, but I'm not going to. We're going to get this thing pretty good. So again, real gentle deburring. This is just basically no pressure, just doing at the sharpening angle. All we're doing is refining that burr off the edge a little bit before moving on. And I really prefer not to switch hands for the deburring, and I'll demonstrate that on the next stone. I'll show you how I, how I deburr. But it, it's really, it really boils down to what you're used to and what's comfortable for you. Either way works. So now we have the Suhara de Bato 4000 grit. Another splash and go stone, which means no soaking needed. We just splash some water on it and off we go. I'll clean these stones later. <clears throat> you want to clean your stones after you use them. So this will give us a good polish on the edge and you should... I'll hold, I'll hold it up to the camera after we get off this stone and you should be able to see that. That the edge is nicely polished. Clean, lovely, beautiful. Okay, got our burr. Not much to it. We're at a point now where we're simply polishing. The edge is there. 
the bubble is there, the angle is there. Almost through. Let's do one more pass on that side. <clears throat> Again, I'm not quite as efficient on this side. Angle's getting a little low, and that's why I didn't get a burr right away. So I had the blade laying over, so I was sharpening a little more up in the shoulder of the new bevel rather than down at the edge. Where it really needs it. I might start using this brick more often. It actually feels pretty good having the uh, okay, we're good. Feels pretty good having the stone up a little higher. I'm kind of used to bending bending down to it more now I don't have to. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the way that I typically deburr when I'm not switching hands and I think you can you could probably <clears throat> let me draw the knife off a little bit you'll be able to see now there's a nice a nice shiny new edge there the 4000 grit stone does not give a mirror polish but it, it polishes the steel enough that you can definitely see where you've been okay so again so holding the same grip holding the sharpening angle we're just, uh, this is the beginning of the stropping process. And the reason I don't like to switch hands for this is that I do this stage of the operation just like I do the stropping. And when I strop, I don't switch hands. So this is just very light strokes with the edge of the knife trailing. And this is all about cleaning the burr off the edge and just really refining and cleaning that apex of the knife. This does not take very long. Once you have a knife reasonably sharp, you will not need to repeat this entire process we've done here today unless you abuse your knife in some way and get a, get a big chip in it or something. Typically, your, your typical maintenance sharpening will be like a thousand grit and then a maybe three to five thousand grit finishing stone. And that will bring you back to very good sharpness. Okay. So again, this is the sharpening angle very gently dragging the blade across the stone with the edge trailing and then repeating on this side very gently you can go as slow as you want there's no speed requirement here basically just the weight of your fingers the weight of the knife no extra pressure now we're not sharpening we're just deburring the edge making it nice and clean This should be, it feels pretty good. The edge feels pretty crisp. So let's call that a wrap and see how I did. <clears throat> now to start off, I'm going to move this freaking stuff out of the way here. Get that out of the way. To start off, let's do a little cut test. Here we have some uh, HEPA. Let's see. We do. Pretty good. There's a few tiny little catches, but it is not bad. This is, by the way, the difficult way through this particular paper. Pretty clean, pretty good edge. Um, I could probably shave with this edge right now, but I'm not going to because I already cut myself once today testing a chisel. So the final step, the way to get that little extra something something on your edge.
involves a leather strap, possibly with a little compound on it. For soft stainless western knives, I prefer the soft leather side of my strop. The other side is hard leather. I like hard leather for hard steels. I like soft leather for softer steels. And again, right about the sharpening angle. And this has a little bit of uh, green compound on it, which just speeds up the process. You don't need compound on your leather to strap. All this is doing is just cleaning and refining the very edge of the edge. You go one way, you go the other. I like to do, again, and this is all edge trailing. You don't want to cut back into your leather, okay? It's doing, I've got the knife about the same angle as the sharpening. Not much pressure, just a, a few ounces of pressure, just enough to feel the knife drag against the leather. Could do an entire video on just stropping, perhaps one day I will, but to get, to get the 99% of the benefits dropping. There's, there's nothing fancy about it, people. You don't need to have perfect technique to get a great edge on a knife. It just may take you a little longer. You might be a little slower than what I did here today. But once you get a knife sharp, it shouldn't take you more than, like, five minutes. When it starts to get a little less than optimum, throw it on quickly on a couple stones, get a burr, clean the burr off on your on your last stone, a few strokes on the leather strap. By the way, in between sharpenings, when you go to cook, have your have your strap out and do do like eight or ten strokes of the knife on the strap, like this, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and it'll be like a razor. You go to cook. So we're gonna call that done for today. It's just the the basics. Be happy to answer any questions. If anybody, if there was anything I didn't explain well enough. <clears throat> so this should be now probably twice as sharp as it just was with that last paper test. Oh yeah. It's, so this is a cheap knife. This is a, uh, a cheap Chinese-made version of the Pinto Santoku. Not a bad cut. This is the hard. This is the uh, hard way through this paper. Particular direction. It's doing a, it's doing a fine job. <clears throat> it's not a bad not a bad result for your basic basic quick three stone sharpening, no super high grit polish, just a little stropping. And just for the heck of it, I suppose we could shave a little bit. Hopefully this will be video. Uh, there we go. See the uh, <laughs> the uh, hairball there? There it is. Pretty good, pretty good little shave there. So that's it. That's how we do it. That's how even a very your basic, inexpensive stainless steel Western kitchen knife, whether or not it's shaped like a Japanese knife shape, but it's made to Western standards, soft stainless steel, blah blah blah. You can get it very, very sharp. If I had some veggies right now, we'd go, tss, 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 and it'd be awesome. So you too can have your knife just like this, just as sharp with just a little bit of practice, investment in, you know, just the basic things you need to learn to sharpen, and a little bit of practice, and all your kitchen knives can be like this all the time that you can shave with if you want to. And hopefully you won't want to do that too much. But uh, when you can shave with it, it will cut your vegetables and stuff very nicely. So I'll sign off for today. Hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. Catch you next time.